Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back with uh, Sisson L4175. Yes, I couldn't even get it in the house fast enough to start the camera. I just got home from work. I'm all funky. But you know what? <laughs> Some things are more important. So let's get to it. There's a lot of cool features in this thing that I've seen that I want to share with you guys. And there's a lot of honesty with the Sisson company. And uh, so, you guys want to be ready to go? Let's do it. Here we go. Stay tuned, grab your popcorn, your favorite beverage, whatever you want to do. And let's get to it and I'll break it down. I'll go through everything I've seen and what I liked about it. And some of the stuff that was kind of, eh, but I haven't got there yet. So I can't throw it under the bus because I, I like what I see. So anyways, guys, let's do this. So here we are. It finally came. I am so psyched about this. Uh, the first thing I want to go over with is this really nice wooden box that they put the, their stuff in. Um, you know, I always believed that when a company... Um, addresses their product in like a tuxedo <laughs> which would this would be that you know and hey sometimes these don't make it through shipping you know they get kind of beat up but still if they take the time to put it in something like this instead of just a piece of cardboard that means that they really stand behind their product and this company stands behind their product and um, you know they're they had a couple of failures here and there and the reason why these are so late was because they did not want to put these out yet until they figured out whatever little thing that they had to do which you know I'm not asking and they're not telling so it doesn't matter but the cool thing is the box is taped shut you know so you have to cut the box open so in shipping it's not going to blow all over the place and you're not going to lose parts um, you know some of the best um, stuff that I have bought from China is in a really nice gift box and uh, so you know that same with the you know the toy and X power you know RC that I bought it came in one of these wooden boxes you know and um, that shows me that they care about their product <clears throat> they go that extra step they don't have to do this but still anyways enough of that let's get into it and I've already cut the package open because I was too excited to even get a shower before I even come up here. I got dirty fingernails and grubby face, but I want to get this out to you guys because you, you need to see this. <clears throat> now, these are, I guess, a limited run of these, of these engines, okay? And I did not know that. I ordered mine way back, I think it was January, maybe December, you know, this year. So, you know, this is what I got right here, limited to 100 sets, and they give you your assembly instructions here. Don't mind my dirty fingernails, guys, I haven't clipped them. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments on that, but I work for a living. And then they give you a basic instruction sheet, kind of get the light off of it, a basic instruction sheet that gives you, you know, your operation manual, basically. And they tell you about, you know, the product, just like they did the, uh, the other Sisson engines that they had there. Uh, the motorcycle and actually the other one, I got the two-cylinder Sisson, you know. So they do a good job at, like, you know, making this here. However, the, when I went to this website <clears throat> for the instructions, I, I couldn't, I only seen them on my phone briefly, so don't, I can't judge them on that. Um, so I, I transferred them to my email so I can study these things because I want to see what you know how the, how it goes together because this is a kit form I ordered a complete engine <clears throat> okay but they they hit me up on an email and asked me you know do you want a kit form or do you want you know a complete engine and I I thought you know what I mean I know that these guys they're going above and beyond the call of duty over there to get me a running engine and um, and they're still testing it actually and uh, when I got this sent out um, I didn't get my starter kit with it you know it comes with the fuel tanks the glow you know the, the spark plugs 
the CDI units and all that. And um, but I got an email from somebody else saying that mine won't be sent out for 10 days. But this came early, so I don't know. I have to contact them on that. But these are your hoses gasket kit. Okay. There's two sets of head gaskets, and if you look closely, you'll see the head gasket is it's a very nice material. It is not, you know, it's thick, and it is actually like a fiber backed. It's not a graphite shim. So you see the thickness in that? Now you can use one or two of these um, according to their manual. You can use you know, a couple of these. Now, here's what I'm going to say. When you open the box, be very, very careful. Okay? It's like, uh, you know, like American Pie, you know? When you pin the corsage on her, be very, very careful, you know? Anyways, it comes with the crankshaft right up front. And what a beautiful crankshaft. You see there's numbers on this. You know why? Because it matches the rods that go on it. So when you assemble it, pay attention. Use your rods that have the same numbers to your crankshaft, okay? Now, I'll get to something else here real quick because I just so much information here. And so I'm going to trip this up this way. Now, when you take this out of the box, okay, don't take nothing out until you put something down like it's something without, not, not even this, like a towel or something, okay? Because when you pull the cylinder block out, if you notice, all the valves are numbered because they have been seated to that particular valve seat. So when you put it back together, you make sure that you do your one through eight and you put it back together that way. And the quality of this stuff is just amazing. I mean, it is amazing. Now one thing I will say that I learned in the instructions, you have to take your cylinders out of the block to put your your silicone seals in them. So it'll you have a water jacket that's sealed, okay? And you have to take your valves out one at a time and then put your valve springs and clips on them so they, you know, move up and down. And your lifters on these are adjustable lifters. So you can set your valve lash just by turning the screw. They suggest, they suggest that you put a little bit of Loctite on your valves, your spacer on your valve, or your lifters, I should say, because the, the, you know the heat will take it down and they'll just they'll just come out around very quick. But you know the cylinder head, that's your inside, that's your combustion chambers of your cylinder head, and then you have your water jacket that goes clear through the top. It comes out this little hole here in the back, which inside the block has to put a little O-ring there. There's a lot of things there. Now everybody's asking, hey, what about that center support bearing, huh? Okay, you see there is one. Okay. It's got a center support. Now, I've always believed that, you know, I, I built a lot of engines in my day. A... You know, there's a for every two pistons, there must be one support. So on your V8, you have, you know, two pistons, a support, two pistons, a support. You know, it rolls all the way back, and then you got your front and back supports too. So what they've done here is they've done a great job with this, and I'll show you this. It's a really unique setup that they have there. Now, as far as the quality of the machining, it is it is stunning. I mean, this is your front plate. They actually put a little design on there for you. The back plate of the front plate is just, you know, just raw aluminum. And then you got your side covers here. However, now we're going to get the, the goods here. Everything is numbered just like the toy and engines, okay? All your 
first off is number. And if you get on that um, instruction sheet there, they tell you everything where everything needs to go. But there's some gray area there. You know, you got to check that out too. Um, I haven't even thought about building this thing yet, but if you notice, when you look through, you'll see a bubble pack at the top. That way there, none of the hardware changes homes during shipping. Everything in there stays in that particular slot, okay? Great idea, Tristan. I love it. They did the same here too. These are all your gears, your pins, your bearings for your camshaft. Now, you see up in the upper corner up here, you have some kind of a backing here, an aluminum backing. Well, that is your oil pump, okay? So you have to assemble your oil pump with shims, and it's, you know, it's going to be a challenge to put it together. Now, if you've never done a engine before, you know, kind of listen up here because it is... You know it's something that you just you know I have I have blown up engines on a Friday night rebuilt them so I could drive to work on Monday um, but you have to you have to know that engine ain't gonna last for a long time so you have to put every single piece of this engine together now up here you'll see you got your carburetor body you've got your carburetor parts you've got your um, timing gears and everything else now this here is your center bearing. The center bearing actually has a slot. So keep it together. It's got a slot and a groove that locks together so it doesn't move. And then it has a set pin in the end there where you lock it down from the bottom side of your block. Right in the center, right there. Okay. You don't use the side holes. You can't use them. So don't even think about it. But this here wraps around your crankshaft, and it just, it, it gives it a lot of love in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Not like what we've dealt with before. Um, so we got all our pistons, we got bearings, we have our carburetor parts, we got pulleys, and we have our one-way starter bearing here. Um, and I'll break out the camshaft, and I'll show you the rods. I was really impressed with the quality of their connecting rods. <laughs> Like you, it's gonna blow your mind when you see that. Here's your camshaft. Okay, you can see there's, you know, you got your lobes there on the thing. Now I haven't figured out which way it goes in because one side's longer than the other. So, but I'll go through the directions tonight and I'll figure that out. So, and we're gonna break out the rods. Now I'm gonna I'm just gonna show you how the rods are packed. Okay. You see how they're packed? One, two, three, four. Okay. And it goes with your crankshaft. Don't don't erase things. Take a photo of this when you put it together. And I'll tell you why. See one, two, three, four. Because the rods are matched to each journal on this, which is a great idea. Now, if you look at the, the connecting rod on this thing, you're going to say, hey, wait, there's no bronze bearing in there. However, this thing is coated. It's an alloy rod that's coated. So it has protection. And it's a really thick, you know, big end on the rod there. I like this. And if you look in the center, they have a nice little oiling hole there. And they don't have one on the top, but we'll work on that when we put it together. Now, another thing I learned was when I kind of scanned the instructions really quick, the piston pins are tapered, okay? So what that means is smaller on one side, bigger on the other. So it can't go out the other side, okay? And what they suggest is, when you put it in, on the one end there, use a little Loctite, keep it together. Um, that way it doesn't 
you know, it may back out, but it ain't gonna bang back and forth and wipe out your cylinder. And um, so, like I say, this is this is just what I could figure out, you know, very quickly with um, what I went through the instructions and all that stuff. But I had to get this out to you guys. Now, in the bottom of the box, we have the flywheel, the back plate, and we have two starter motors, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And we have this really amazing looking 3D printed intake manifold. This is 3D printed and it's, it's aluminum. It is stunning. This thing is just beautiful. The quality of this is amazing, <laughs> you know? It's like, <laughs> I love it. Now, the exhaust manifold is the same thing, 3D printed aluminum. And they machine all the ends. Anything that has to go up to the cylinder block is machined, and it is very nice. So, the same with the intake manifold. You look where it butts up against it, and it's super, super nice. And where the carburetor goes in, it's all machined. Let me, there you go. It's all machined, and it's got your set screw. So, that was, I was, I love that. Um, now, they're telling you that when you break this thing in, now I haven't quite figured out what this is for. Oh, this is the side cover for your lifters, for your tappets, okay? And, um, they tell you when you install your piston rings in this, okay, they give you two options of that. Uh, you know, a piston ring and a, oh, like a silicone, you know, um, rubber O-ring that's it's pretty, it's pretty intense, you know what I mean? So you can, you can run it. Um, but when you put this together, everything has to mate together. So when when they talk about they show the videos of the uh, um, the debugging process and you notice there's tons of steam coming out of the the water the water bottle. That's because everything is rubbing elbows right now, trying to fit together. Why th those guys break these engines in? Now I noticed on several of my engines they run really hot when you first tr break them in, so you run them rich and. Uh, you know, you, you run a lot of extra coolant in them, you know. It's best to break these engines in, not with a little tiny radiator and a short hose. You need a lot of hose, run it into a bucket, you know, have it come out of the bucket into the water pump. That way there, you're, you're cooling that liquid down and you keep that block cool. Why the rings are seating, the rods are seating, the wrist pins, and um, you know, there's a lot of, lot of things going on there. It's kind of like, um, I remember one time I went to New York City and I got a subway and it was like seriously too many people for the subway car and uh, as the subway stopped at each stop we had a little bit of elbow room you know what I mean so when you put this together expect a lot of friction okay um, I this is a common thing I built a lot of brand new engines before all brand new parts and I've actually had them catch on fire you know, like anything like header paint, stuff like that, it gets so hot when it's marrying together all their parts that, you know, it lights it up. And if there's any oil involved, I had a, when I redid my 1980s E28, I had set the lifters on it briefly. Well, the lifter splash went down in when all the headers come together, which would be, you know, here, all the headers come down and they go into a collector. So there's four of these pipes that come into a collector. There was oil in there and during the break-in period of me running this thing, you know, in, in the frame sitting on the floor, it caught on fire. And, um, you know, it kind of scares the crap out of you, but it is what it is. So, anyways, they suggest that you use one ring and then you have to tear it apart to put in two rings after the break-in. And if you use the rubber O-ring, 
okay, you get more compression out of it and all that stuff, you know, because it's going to be a, a steel ring and then a rubber O-ring. Um, the friction that is involved in a rubber O-ring keeps a lot of heat in the head and all that stuff. So I think what they're telling us is to um, break it in with one ring only and then tear it apart and then put it back together with two rings after the break-in process. Um, if you want the rubber O-ring, you could probably do that too. I don't know how much torque I need out of this engine, um, but we'll figure it out down the road. So we'll do it, you know what I'm saying? Now, I noticed on the flywheel, this is, I've wanted this forever. All I asked of this engine, because if you guys remember, I was working on a clutch for this, but I didn't know what the dimensions were. And being the engine, we had a lot of shipping problems. They had a lot of lockdowns over there. They couldn't, they couldn't, you know, we had a lot of discommunication. But now I have this. But here's what I've seen on, I don't know if it's in the manual, but it, it's definitely in the, uh, the, instruction, the, uh, the instruction sheet online. No, they only show just this. Anyways, they show... On the back of this, in when you get on here and when you hit this up for your instructions, they show a diaphragm clutch on here, which that's what I wanted to help them out with. But looks like they already, you know, kind of did it already. So, anyways, you got a really nice flywheel for your one-way bearing. It's got nice teeth on it. It's kind of like the Conley Aussie flywheel, you know, except the bearing's a lot. That's a lot more reliable. Um, and then, like I say, you got two starter motors. And these look really small. I would think maybe a brushless motor with the same size pinion on it would probably be better. You know, but I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna try to break the thing in with um, like some other external unit. Now, this is the back case of the engine. You can see it already has a bearing put in there. And there's your starter mount here. Now, from what I understand, your starter's gotta go in first before your flywheel. Um, like I say, I haven't totally done the directions yet, but I'm just trying to get this out there so you guys can see. If you ordered one of these, um, you know, I bought mine to basically build like an HGP 407 out of it. But it's a little bit big for that. However, I can still use the frame, and it's more of a six scale, eight six scale somewhere around there. Um, I would say more a six scale. So that military jeep that they got out there, that new, that one they had come out with last year, there, you know, that would be cool. Um, it would probably fit in there perfect because this is a Model A style uh, military jeep, you know, flathead. Uh, engine so it would be cool for that now this is your dipstick because you do put oil in there and you do have to put in your cylinder block on the sides oh, where is it over here make sure you don't tip this upside down because your valves fall out um, you have to put in your um, set you know your screws in here to regulate your pressure now, in the oil pan, one thing that my engine did not come with, which I thought it did, was you see up here there's two screws, there's an oil filter that bolts to the side of this. So you have a hose coming out here with a nipple, comes into the oil filter, gets sucked into the, the oil pump. So it, it's constantly, you know, circulating oil on the thing. And um, this is, like I say, your screws in here. This is your dipstick that screws into the, the block itself and let you know how much oil you have in your engine. Now, this thing goes like almost to the bottom. Just about maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch off the bottom of the oil pan. So, that way there you can check your oil. Now you got your timing. Here's your crankshaft. And I'm not sure which one is your so this is an idler pulley. This is your water pump up here, and this is your cam 
uh, gear goes here. So I'm learning here, you know, because like I say, I didn't get a chance to really fully see the instructions, but everything is super quality on this thing. I mean, it's just, it's amazing quality. I, I just, I was blown away because I, I've seen some aluminum 3D printed stuff before and it's really scary looking, but these are true, true, look like they're casted. It almost looks like they're, you know, wax casted. They're, it's just beautiful. And uh, so that's my spin on it, guys. I'm going to start putting it together. Um, and I'm going to go step by step. I'm not going to try to make any mistakes. I want to, you know, because this is something, this is all uncharted territory for me. Um, you know, I know the, the Toy and L400 is like the back of my hand. You know, the L200s, the, uh, the NR200s, you know. All them engines are basically the same. This is something new. Um, and like I say, there's there's some learning here, like to get the cylinders out, how to get them out without damaging them, and you have to keep each cylinder where it is for each piston, okay? So don't move them around. We do one at a time, put your O-rings in. They say there's three O-rings per cylinder wall, okay? Looks like there's two on the bottom and one on the top ring there. And then when you put your cylinder head on there with your gaskets, that squishes it down and seals all your water jackets off which keeps your water from blowing down through into your oil you know so anyways i want to grab something to eat and hit the showers man i am pooped uh, it's been a long week i i didn't put up videos for the last week or so there because you know it's just been crazy crazy you know in my life but when this came i dropped everything and threw it out there for you guys to see and you know, like, share, subscribe if you want. Uh, tell your friends. Um, if you want one of these, I'll put the link below for Sterling Kit because I did not know, I did not know that they were a limited to 100 sets. I did not know that. This was number 23. Um, I think the one they were building me was probably number one or two, you know. But uh, I don't know if I'll still get that in the mail or whatever. I got to contact them to see because I still need the CDI unit for it and the spark plugs and the starter kit that I paid for and we'll go from there so but like I say here it is and any questions comments feel free to hit me up and I'll try to get back as soon as possible um, I've got a lot of questions on people want me to build them stuff I am thinking about it um, you know, normally I wouldn't have the time for that but I think you know you guys have been great to me. You've supported me for a long time. And, you know, so I'm going to start trying to do a build. One for me, one for you. You know, and, you know, a lot of people want to buy them. And, you know, there's a lot of time, money that's spent on these things. So it all depends on your budget, my time, and everything else. So, but anyways, guys, take care. Have a good one. And I'll catch you later. Stay tuned for more. Because the V8's coming too, you know. And I can't wait to get that puppy here because I already got a project for that one, you know. So we'll see what happens. So, later. Love to all. Take care of yourself. Stay safe.